I'm going to be talking to you about lower extremity nerve injuries, the most common nerve injuries in the lower extremity. We start with the tarsal tunnel syndrome. 80% of the cases in tarsal tunnel syndrome are without a cause. Patient will have burning, numbness, tingling, electric shock at the bottom of the foot the plantar aspect. So here is a case, a question. Patient had surgery six months ago. He still have the same symptoms. What is the problem? The problem is you have an incomplete release of the impinging structures. Now, if it is a ganglia, it will be good. If it is something else, it's not going to be as good in result as the ganglia. Recurrence of tarsal tunnel syndrome is usually caused by inadequate release. And repeat the operation is not advisable. In general, tarsal tunnel syndrome surgery, the decompression, is not as good as carpal tunnel release. How about the Tom, Dick, and Harry? This, obviously, the names we give to the structures behind the medial malleolus, and that will be the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, and the artery, in and in the nerve, because we're talking about the tarsal tunnel and that nerve, posterior tibial nerve, I thought we'd bring it to you. And Harry, Harry is the flexor hallucis longus, very important muscle in the foot. The L5, the L5 nerve root. will supply the big toe, the big toe extension. The big toe extension will be supplied by L5 nerve root. So don't mix them up. This is the extensor hallucis longus. The other one, Tom, Dick, and Harry, is the flexor hallucis longus. Now we go to the cutaneous innervation. You can see here uh, the saphenous nerve is in that medial side. I want to get the pointer. The saphenous nerve is here, this area. This is the medial plantar nerve the lateral plantar nerve, and then the shoron nerve. So when I ask the question, the sensation in the red area, you see that little toe here? Little toes right here. So this is the medial side. This is the lateral side. The red area is the shoron nerve. So we change it to be the green area. Again, they made another mistake because the medial side, it is the saphenous uh, nerve, not the medial plantar nerve. It is the saphenous nerve. The medial plantar nerve is right here. The lateral plantar nerve is right here. And this is the shorter nerve. This is the saphenous nerve. <clears throat> it's a little bit different than the top of the foot. Uh, so you got to be aware of the difference, and I will describe that sometimes in the future. A posterolateral disc herniation of L5-S1 will decrease sensation at, at what? The lateral aspect of the foot. How about if it is 
foraminal disc herniation. Foraminal disc herniation at L5, S1, will get you L5 nerve root. That will decrease, be decreased sensation at the top of the foot. Top of the foot, L5, lateral side is S1, medial side is L4 of the foot. I'm going to keep repeating that again in future lectures. Very important. And the L5 is usually the superficial perineal nerve in this area at the top of the foot. How about static nerve injury? A high static nerve lesion can mimic common perineal nerve injury at the fibular head. So the both will come with a foot drop. How do you know the difference? Because the common perineal nerve injury will give you a foot drop and the high static nerve will give you a foot drop. Look at the innervation. The short head of the biceps muscle is supplied by the common perineal branch of the sciatic nerve. The long head is supplied by the tibial branch. So that does not help us. So we like the short head of the biceps, small little muscle, but important because the muscle gets the innervation from the sciatic nerve, common perineal. And then after that, the common perineal will go and give muscles of the dorsal extension of the ankle. So if you lose ankle dorsal extension, then that can be from either. So you do an EMG and try to figure out where the lesion is. So which muscle do you do EMG to decide if the sciatic nerve injury occur at the hip or at the knee? The short head of the biceps. Look at that, the short head of the biceps. And not too many people got it correct. So the patient will have the foot drop and the EMG abnormality will show at the short head of the biceps. Then we say, oh, the lesion is not from injury to the common perineal nerve at the fibular head. This lesion is high. It's at the sciatic nerve because the EMG changes occurred in the short head of the biceps. So at the sciatic nerve comes down, it innervates the short head of the biceps first. So if the change is happening here to this muscle, the lesion is here. But if the lesion is down here at the fibular head or neck, then this muscle will be okay. will have normal innervation. If you test it and the muscle is okay, then the lesion is down here at the fibular neck. That's very important exam question. The deep perineal nerve gives sensory branch to the whip space between the first and the second toes. So the superficial perineal will give you everything else, that side and that side, except that little area. So we can test it for compartment syndrome because the anterior compartment is the most commonly affected in compartment syndrome. Now, another area, important area, the lateral plantar nerve is very important. It is a branch of the posterior tibial nerve, which comes from continuation of the tibial nerve that comes from the sciatic nerve. So sciatic nerve, you got two, common perineal and tibial. Tibial comes here, give you posterior tibial, the posterior tibial will have two branches, medial and lateral plantar. The lateral plantar is important because of the reasons I outlined here. It is similar to the ulnar nerve in the hand. 
It supplies most of the intrinsic muscles of the foot. So if you, if you have a question about uh, which nerve supplies the interossei, it is the lateral plantar. Any question in the foot is probably will be about the lateral plantar. It is the pexter nerve uh, connected with it, which is the first branch of the lateral plantar nerve, and it gets confused with plantar fasciitis. And that nerve also can be injured if you put a rod from the heel up into uh, the calcaneus and the tibia. This is the nerve, and these are the branches of the nerve. But you can see that the all the interossei come from that nerve. It's similar to the under nerve. Interossei muscle to the foot is supplied by lateral plantar nerve. Again, they made a mistake. They can't get it because it's not common. But this is what the exam brings. Heel pain can occur from different reasons, different causes. It's difficult to determine the source of pain because they're all close to each other. Look at the area here, within centimeter from each other. It's difficult to make the diagnosis. It's confusing. It's difficult to give treatment. But one of the problem is the plantar fasciitis. The other problem that can be confused with it that's similar to it is called the Baxter nerve. It is similar to symptoms of plantar fasciitis. The first branch of the lateral plantar nerve is called the Baxter nerve. And it is involved with chronic heel related pain. The Baxter nerve contribute to about 20% of heel pain causes. And this nerve provide innervation to the abductor digitum enemy. It's almost like the SI joint with low back pain, it's like joints hidden, you know, you don't know. Uh, the same thing, back certain nerve is hidden, you don't know, it's 20%, the same thing like, almost like the SI joint. So here's a question, the nerve involved in heel pain is a branch of the lateral plantar. The, again, they got it wrong. How about interdigital neuroma? Morton's neuroma. It is compression of the interdigital nerve. It occurs mostly about 80%, you know, in the third interdigital space. But maybe in, you know, few percentage, like 20%, it's in the second interdigital space. The pain is usually at the bottom it's localized. Uh, it does not involve the whole foot, the whole forefoot. The pain radiates distally in about 60%, and numbness occurs in about 40%. Morton's neuroma occurs in the third web space. They got it correct. When you examine the patient, the area of Focal and localized tenderness is in the plantar web space and not over the joint, not at the top. It's at the bottom of the foot. 